Hey everybody, welcome to the real United States. And today we're going to talk about hamburgers. All right. Because I, at least here in the United States, we consider the hamburger sort of an American icon. Now, in order to do this, we figured we had to come to a hamburger stand, which in this case we chose Fuddruckers. Now, Fuddruckers is a, a chain, and I'll tell you a little bit about it further on. But for right now, it was founded in 1979. And the fellow that founded it founded it on the idea that the world needed a better burger. And truly he came up with something better than the pressed burgers you find at a lot of fast food places. So we're going to take you inside, we're going to have some, eat, some eats, we're going to talk a little bit about burgers and about Fuddruckers as well. So come on and join us. How you doing? Hi! I would Is like that on? The two-third pound burger. For here yeah. to go. For here. Is that Cameroon? Sure it is. You okay. want to be in the vlog? Alright. How do you want your burger cooked? Rare. Medium rare? You want fries and drink? No. Uh, I want a drink. Okay. What's your vlog about? It's called The Real United States. It's about life as you and I live it without all the hype that you see on the news. How about that? Anything else, sir? Uh, something for the little lady. Yes. Yeah, I'd like the third pound burger. How you want it cooked? Uh, you want cheese on it? No, thank you. You want fries and drink? Um, just drink. Yes, ma'am. You told it was 1954. One moment. Don't swipe the car yet. I got two thirds coming back, Mr. Lynn. Okay. Here. And now you can uh, swipe your car, sir. Thank you. When this buzz up, your order's gonna be ready. Wonderful. Thank you and enjoy. Have a good day. Thank you very Thank much, you. Thank you, ma'am. And that's how easy it is to part with your money in the United States, folks. <laughs> so they give you this cool little piece of electronic equipment that's going to light up and buzz and whatnot. Fairly common in a lot of restaurants. Uh, that's gonna tell you when your order's ready, and then you just come up and pick it up, and you put on your condiments, however you want. And of course, I ordered the two-third pound burger, the largest one that they have at this particular franchise. Some of them in the Midwest, we've been to ones that have a one-pound burger. And if memory serves me right, there was a place that had a two-pound burger. But I know they have a one-pound burger at some other stores across the United States. So, sorry I'm clutching the cups, but I'm trying to do a lot of things here while Bev's filming. Hang on, and we'll let you know when our food arrives. So I said that the Fuddruckers was founded in 1979. It was founded by a fellow named Philip Romano in Texas. He founded it in San Antonio in what was a converted bank building that was converted to his restaurant. Now you can see that this is lit up, so that means our order's ready. So I'm going to cut it here, we're going to go get our food. So this, folks, this, I can get around. So I'm going to show you what a two-third pound hamburger looks like here at Fuddruckers. Now Beverly has been, you know, a little more reserved and got the one-third pound. So I'm told.
a third pound burger with ketchup and salt, pepper on it, and then I'm having a little salad on the side with the lettuce and tomato, and I'll put the pickles on my burger. Now, you all know that there's an even money bet that I'm going to end up wearing half of this before I'm through this ordeal. But, be that as it may. Now, I've got to use a cheat sheet here because I wanted to tell you a little bit. Fuddruckers has 188 stores throughout the United States, 77 company owned, and 111 that are franchised. They also have one in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada, four in Bahrain, one in Chile, two in Italy, two in Mexico, one in Panama, one in the Dominican Republic, one in Poland, one in Puerto Rico, which is part of the United States, incidentally, um, two in Beirut, Lebanon, one in Morocco, five in the United Arab Emirates, ten in Saudi Arabia, and recently, I guess, one in Colombia. You see why I didn't want to try and commit that to memory. Now, anyway, burgers are a huge thing here in the United States. According to what I, I read before we left to come down here, about 50 billion, with a B, billion burgers are consumed in the United States every year. That's a lot of beef, folks. That is a lot of burgers. Um, they constitute something like 40% of all sandwiches sold, which is... Uh, Kind of weird, you know, compared to, you know, you got sub sandwiches and club sandwiches and all. Yeah, about 40% of all sandwiches sold are a hamburger. And is a hamburger a sandwich? I understand that it is. It is a hamburger sandwich. So that answers that philosophical question, if you will. Now, the hamburger, where was it invented? Well, nobody really knows. However, its roots probably start in Germany, maybe in the, the town of its namesake, Hamburg. But at that time, it was probably a more what we would think of as a meatball sub. They were meatballs inside of a, a, a bun. Hamburgers here in the United States, the, the claims are for the invention probably late 19th century. There are uses of the term as early as 1884, 1894, I think, 1894. Um, in a newspaper article, another newspaper article in the Chicago Tribune a couple years later in uh, 1896, specifically called it a hamburger sandwich. Um, so nobody's really certain, you know, a lot of people, you know, try to claim that they invented the hamburger or it was invented here by, you know, so-and-so. But there's, they, because there was no records, things weren't written down, it's not like the day where everybody's got a smartphone and they, you know, film everything that happens. There, there's some ambiguity and it's probably lost to, to time now. However, where it became popular in the um, culture of the United States was in the 1904 World's Fair in St. Louis, Missouri. So early part of the 20th century is really where it took off and boom, exploded. Everybody heard about it, everybody wanted to try it, everybody wanted to try making one, and that is really where it became a, an American icon. So if you think, you know, mom, home, apple pie, and burgers, and baseball, you know, are, are very American things. We certainly here think of the hamburger as being an American institution. Um, so now, huh, I think that's probably all in the history of the hamburger that you really care to hear. Um, I'm gonna try and eat this thing. Oh, one other thing, the name, Hamburg. Hamburger, um, According to research I did, they say it was probably named after Hamburg, but not Germany, but Hamburg, New York, which is on the western end of the state of New York. Um, not necessarily where it was invented, but where its namesake is. For those of you who care, there is also a Hamburg in Michigan. In fact, I lived in Hamburg, Michigan, which is a little tiny squad of a town um, back in the, in the 1960s. So, yeah, in the 1960s, folks, sorry. So the, the name got transplanted here from Germany in the development of our nation. There is a Hamburger Hall of Fame, by the way, in Seymour, Wisconsin. I'm going to put the link down in the description box below. They have an annual burger festival there in Wisconsin every year in August. I think it's going to be August 11th in 2017. So 
If you're going to be, in, you know, in the United States, in Wisconsin area, you want to go to the Burger Festival, the information's down below. So let's go ahead and, and see if I can wrap my mouth around this giant piece of beef and uh, what happens. Okay, I'm gonna I'm going to try and tackle this ridiculously large sandwich. It's insane. Mm. Oh, but it's also good. Mm. I'm not sure if they use a plate griddle back there. I think they do, or if it's a, a flame uh, grill. That is so good. All the rest of the episodes you're going to see this week, I'm going to be wearing this shirt. It's going to have crap all over it, I guarantee you. So part of the reason, and yes, we eat too much in the United States because food is relatively inexpensive. It's very satisfying. And Beverly's giggling because I got crap all over me. But uh, the hamburgers probably got its climb to popularity, not just because of the World's Fair, but because of the convenience factor. By grinding the meat, mincing the meat, putting it in a patty cookie, it would cook faster than cooking a steak or any other form of a regular piece of meat that hadn't been diced up. You could slap that into a couple of pieces of bread or a bun, and it was something you could you'd hold. It wasn't, it, it was a, a simple food, it, you know, some kind of a, a common man's food. They could eat and go, especially during that period of development in our nation when there was a lot of industrialization happened. Obviously, men made up the majority of the workforce, but you could go, you could get this thing, you could wolf it down, and you could go back to work. So convenience, speed, this was another reason that this became such a popular thing. And yes, we eat too many of them, and I am a shining of an example of why. But, well, we do enjoy them. So, I'm going to go ahead and finish my lunch. I hope you've enjoyed this trip to Fuddruckers and a little history on hamburgers here in the United States. I've been, I've been dying to talk a little bit about hamburgers. And, uh, because they, they, they are a significant part of the cuisine here. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for joining us. If you got questions or comments, hey, leave them in the comments section below. I love hearing from all of you. I try to get back to everybody I can. And if you want to, just stop in and say hi. I just love hearing from all of you. If you're new here, well, thanks for joining us. And hey, consider picking subscribe. Come along for the adventure. We love having everybody with us. And as always, thank you for watching.